Blog Talk Radio. Hello, folks. How you doing? It's Danny Tisdale, and we are celebrating. You know, we celebrate this all year long, but it's Black Music Month, and we want to give some props to those who have created uh, great music uh, throughout Harlem and around the world. And uh, we celebrate Black Music Month, and, but we celebrate all music from everyone. Uh, and it's Harlem World Radio. It's the Danny Tisdale Show. Yeah, I'm that guy, Danny Tisdale. Uh, if you have some questions for us or if you've got somebody you think should be a guest, don't forget to hit us up on Twitter or Facebook yeah, go to Instagram because, you know, we're there. Uh, let us know. Um, today we welcome another leader, legend, and trailblazer in the world of Harlem. And you know Harlem is one of the greatest communities in the world. I'm not just saying that. Everybody say it. And please don't forget that we're independently owned company. Please support what we do by clicking on that donate button that you'll see on the page. And as we're celebrating Black Music Month, what's better than celebrating it with some tequila? That's my uh, hint of our guests. And today we have Harlem native Joe Cruz Jr. who spent his career managing branding and distribution for national alcohol brands where he carefully observed consumption habits and trends across the country. Cruz noticed the qualms most people have with tequila and identified an opportunity to reposition the beverage by producing an ultra smooth tequila without those that notorious burn yum 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 he started the company from his couch with only twenty thousand dollars that's the line since 2007 uh yave tequila and i hope i'm pronouncing it right has grown to over 200 locations What's that, in three years, two years? Wow. Cruz is intent on giving back to Harlem, which we love, and encouraging entrepreneurship throughout our fabulous community. Yabe Tequila is the first company to create mango, coconut, jalapeno, natural-flavored tequila. Oh, boy. We'll talk about that. It is a small batch of crafted um, – I'm sorry. It is small batch crafted with the proprietary process from the most awarded distillery in Mexico. We'll talk about that too. The process brings out the authenticity, authentic yet ultra smooth taste. Yave uh, makes the world's first natural flavored tequilas using its premium base with select super fruits that enhance the tequila profile. In addition, Mr. Cruz is working with Union Sediment by local East Harlem, proving tequila for all for uh, providing tequila for all their events and a scholarship program, if my memory serves me correct, with Union Settlement. But we, we'll talk about that with uh, Mr. Cruz. Joe Cruz is a father to a 16-year-old single father. This, this brother's doing it and can fully um, empathize with the plight of both the child and the parent in this situation. And he's certainly doing that, especially as we talked before Father's Day. Mr. Cruz, how are you doing, sir? I'm great, man. It's amazing to hear someone read your bio and read, like, what you've done. It's super humbling because, I mean, you always want to work so hard that you don't have to introduce yourself anymore. And I'm coming along, so it's pretty cool to hear everything you just said. And to call me a legend, wow. Like, it's a lot to live up to, but I'm going to keep doing it as much as I can every day. Well, you know, Joe, that's what we try to do is really have leaders, legends, and trailblazers on the show who are doing great things in the community. And that great, And those great things also include giving back. And, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't get better than that. And to have the success you're doing and, you know, the cherry on top, if, if, if the cherry is the tip of the top, is that you are a single dad. And, and some people, you know, think that, uh, you know, dads don't do the work that you're doing and, you know, doing the heavy lifting. And, uh, you know, to me, that's another feather in your, in your cap. And, uh, you know, much love to you on, uh, you know, pre-Father's Day. Oh, thank you, man. Happy Father's Day to you. I don't know if you're a dad, but happy Father's Day to you too, brother. Well, I, I'm not, but uh, uh, because I teach um, yeah, middle school, uh, I feel like it. So I, I'll take that, you know. Um, you but I want to get right into you're, you're a father to many. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, but but more about you and, and the great work that you're doing. Who inspired you, uh, Joe, in doing the – uh, the work that you're doing with 
Am I pronouncing it correct? Uh, Jave, or no, it's Yave Tequila. Yave, yeah, Yave means key in Spanish, so Yave is how you pronounce it. But in okay. terms of who inspired me, man, I've been liquor for yeah. 25 years, since way before I could drink, because I was a kid, like literally a kid kid. And my dad, godfather, uncles, and close friends' fathers were in the industry. They ran major hmm. companies. They were, were bosses, so to speak. But my goal has never been to be the CEO of another man's company. So as time went on, I learned, you know, I worked all three tiers in the huh. liquor game. I got to learn. I was fortunate enough to, to build national brands as well as local brands. And as time went on, I mean, I, I kept learning and learning, like, the process and such. And one day, August 26, 2015, I literally retired. I said, I'm done. I can't do this for other people. Hmm. I'm going to do my own thing. And, of course, being born and raised in Harlem, I mean, it meant the world to me to do something in my community because not a lot of people – every a lot of people survive in our hoods, but nobody really thrives in these hoods. Right. So I wanted to show people, like, there's a lot more that can be done. And going forward, I mean, we filmed the entire process. So essentially we filmed a documentary on the process. And I didn't do it for the brand. Huh. I did it because being, being from Harlem, being from the hood, Every kid wants to be a rapper and a baller. That, that's a normal thing. Right. But we don't have a backup plan when that doesn't happen. So right. what do we do? Work for somebody for 25 years. We complain the whole 25 years. When we retire, we complain about the last 25 <laughs> for the next 25. And I wanted to break that cycle. And I wanted to glorify the struggle and the process as opposed to the end result. Because everybody sees the Instagram moment. They don't see what it took to get there. So I'm showing them, like, it's cool. Joy's a liquor. Yeah, celebrities are holding it. He's in the club. He's doing all these things. But look at what I went through to get to this point. I didn't just wake up mm-hmm. rich. My dad wasn't rich. I didn't get money inherited. I built it from nothing, and I wanted it to motivate people who are just like me, whether you're Spanish, black, white. I don't care about age. I don't care about age, race, gender, where you come from in the world. Struggle knows no race. It doesn't know you. It's, it's like everybody goes to it, and some people don't know how to get out of it. So hopefully I can motivate some people, man. Yeah, and the struggle certainly doesn't uh, have uh, uh, any race in mind as it as one struggles. But you know, I wanted to go back a little further, and because uh, you mentioned your uh, family being in the business, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? How did they get in the business? You, you know, your relatives. I'm just curious. Well, my dad. I mean, born and raised in Harlem. Same thing. He's a, he's a Harlemite just as I am. He just kind of, yeah. like, took a job in a liquor store. And as he was in a liquor huh. store, he was one of those hardworking guys who went from a local store to, to a huge mm. store, North End in the Bronx, actually. Mm. The old guy, wow. Mo, Mo Eichenbaum, was the old owner, like, 30 years ago <laughs> or something. He hired my dad. My dad built it, like, from what it was to what it is now. And mm. the distributors would keep coming in, like, who built the store? Who changed it? And my dad was wow. the face of that. And then they hired him. He went to a distributor, and then he started representing bigger brands, and he just kind of became that guy. And I got to see it, right. even though I didn't really drink. I didn't drink as a kid. I didn't drink until I was 24 years old. But I got to huh. see my dad, you know, get props and build things and do what he did. Then he stopped at a certain level. And because, you know, that's my dad, he went to a certain level. My job to take the crew's name to another level. Like, that's my gotcha. responsibility now. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to do every single day. Well, and, you know, uh, that's a, a great story because it talks about work ethic, and uh, that seems to, in some places, be lost because they think you just start a website and, you know, get some followers and successes, you know, right around the corner because you can become an influencer, done. Um uh, and it's not like that. You still have to put in the hours and the time. You know, I was curious, you know, uh, I guess it's part of the secret sauce. What was the, excuse me, what was the key in growing the business from zero locations to 200 locations? And if my math is right, which wasn't my strength in school, uh, you did that in a couple of years. A uh, year, a little less than a year and a half. We actually launched okay. December 2017, so it's been just about a year and a half now. Wow. But, I mean, the secret sauce, so to speak, my friends call me the cheat code because I've been in liquor my entire career. I know the game. It's, nothing's, like, new to me. But uh, I, I knew I was going to make an amazing product. I knew the bottle would be what it is. I knew that the story would, uh, would, would you know, enhance everything that we've done and encapsulate people. But the most important part that I stress to anybody that's doing business, team, it doesn't matter what I've done in terms of everything I created. If I was, if I didn't have the team that I have, I'd just be a guy who created one of the best tequilas out, and it'd be in about twenty mm. accounts, and I'd be the guy who was doing everything. But I, mm. I, I forced myself. I didn't force myself. I, I put myself in a position where I built the best team possible with the best people around me, and I didn't care. Again, once again, I have 
every I have almost every race down with the company, and it kind of works out that way because I just found the best person for the job as you know as being fit. And those guys, without those guys, I'm, again, I'm just a guy who's on an interview right now talking about a product I made, but not the level of success that we've attained. So really having the, the right people with the right ingredients makes the success. Yeah, and people who are as hungry, if not hungrier than I am, when it comes to trying to get to the top as quickly as possible. Well, you know, you mentioned um, – I, I think you had mentioned the word uh, – clubs and success and celebrity uh you sound like a guy who you know kind of a more of an old school approach where it's nose to the grindstone uh here's what i'm focused on and i'm asking this question early because usually it's part of the second half of the you know i'm gonna come back to it because i i do want to uh you know kind of uh, drill down on that a, a little bit um, and, uh, you know, mango, coconut, jalapeno, tequila is not my thing, but, uh, how come nobody thought of doing mango or coconut tequila in the past? I mean, to me, that's, that's, that's perfect for somebody like me. You know, I'm a wine drinker. I like to sit, maybe, you know, look at a game or talk to friends and, you know, we sip wine uh, because yeah. tequila, you know, is typically like I think you mentioned, it has a nice little burn to it. But the mango sounds like it would cut that nicely and be kind of a nice balance. Well, none of the tequila that we created has that burn. Like we we like to make fun of other brands. I'm not going to name any names, but when somebody makes a tequila face, it's because it burns. It's because you're like, woo! Our people are prepared to make tequila face, and it doesn't burn. I spent two years making that happen. And the reason I did the flavors, I mean, the reason I did the mango coconut jalapeno specifically, I, I did the mango for my grandmother who passed away. That was a favorite fruit. Ah, so the world's first okay. mango tequila was created for me abuela. Like, that was a favorite fruit. She raised me along with my oh, mom man. and dad and everybody. So that was in honor of her. And that's the one that blew up. Grandmothers. Coconut yeah. dedicated. Yeah, co- coconut dedicated to my mother. Single mother raised me. She was seeing her work, go to school full-time, work full-time, work as hard as any human being alive. All right. My favorite fruit was coconut, so that was an easy one. And jalapeno was dedicated to my dad, because even though my mom and dad got divorced at 10, my dad never left. It's not like in most, mm. you already know, in most, most people in our hood, oh, especially yeah. Harlem, you have, one, you have one parent, not the other. And with me, I didn't right. have that. So where, where I didn't have the money, I didn't have the resources most people had, I had an amazing family structure and people around me that wouldn't allow me to mess up. Like, it, it wasn't mm. an option for me. If I messed up any time, I had... I had essentially like five or six parents because my entire family was <laughs> my, I had a small family, but they were close. So grandparents right. along with sisters and godmothers and aunts and uncles that all lived around me. So it was it was like I was a golden child as a kid because they always saw my potential way more than I saw it. That's great. That's so when great. I created That's the flavors, what was, was started the flavors in general was I made flavors for bartenders, you know, mm. use the base. I, I made mm. it for chefs because they can cook with it. And, of course, I made it for women because men buy women want. So when it comes to right. tequila, it's, be, it's known for being harsh. So with the flavors, you could do them as shots. You could do them as a mixture. You could serve it cold, chill, whatever you want. But it was something to kind of get into multiple markets. And the reason nobody's really thought of it, to be honest, is everybody reads the same book when it comes to liquor. Everyone says, oh, these guys did this. I'm going to do the same thing because the first guy through the wall always gets bloody. So I wanted to be the yeah. first guy to create the mango and the flavors and take a stand behind it. I mean, so far, so good. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, you know, again, you know, when I first read about it, you know, I, I was licking my lips because it's like, you know, I can imagine that taste and it just sounds like, you know, that kind of taste. So I, I just wanted to, you know, mention that and uh, uh, and also, you know, mention uh, something else. Uh, and it may be the case and, and, you know, I'm not making a judgment on there because uh, you have your own tequila company. I know you probably – you know, driving around in, you know, a, a Ferrari and, you know, you got a driver waiting for you after the podcast. But you're also, um, you know, working with nonprofits in Harlem, Union Settlement and by local East Harlem, I think the other one is. Joe, why? You could have, you know, I mean, somebody on this arm, somebody on the other arm, somebody in the back seat, you got a driver. Why did you decide to you know, give back to the community. I, I, I don't get it. 
I'm just joking. I mean, first of all, I'm just joking. Nah, I, I get it, but it's what most people believe. But life isn't social media, man. In the real world, you have to put money back into the brand so you can get to the level you want to achieve. So it's not like everything we make comes back to me. Everything goes back into the team, the, the company, and then in turn going into the community. I mean, because recently, I mean, as of Tuesday, I, beca- I actually got an award from the Spanish Chamber of Commerce, the Festival in Puerto oh, Rican fantastic. Parade. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, being the first Puerto Rican to create a tequila. Yeah, so was, thank you, man. More props it was humbling, to you, man. And, and they spoke about, like, everything I had done. And, again, it's weird to hear people talk about my accomplishments because I do them just <laughs> boom. I don't do them for any, for any credit. And, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm only at 1% of where I want to achieve. So the reason I give hmm. back is because people – people right now can see the growth. Like, when I joined the organization, well, they, everybody kind of mm. puts me in. I don't really join things. They're like, we need you to be part of it. I'm like, cool, I'll show up when I can. I promise you, and I'll give what I can. And about a year ago, we had just begun, and every time they do a meeting, I, every time I can attend, I update people. They want me to speak, and I update. And it, it's amazing to see the people in the room who have small businesses who can't even fathom what I've done. But because you're right. sitting in the same room with me, I mean, it's achievable. Because I, I grew up five blocks away from you or ten blocks away from you, I didn't have any major advantages. I just kept pushing until, you know, I got here and I'm still pushing. It's not over yet. So if I can help people in my neighborhood with the money I have to spend on the Bugatti, I'd rather create scholarships and help schools. And like what LeBron James did in, in Ohio, I thought that was amazing. So we built a school right. for kids. As other people who have done it, I plan on doing something like that for my neighborhoods because people just forget. It's not, not about forgetting where you come from. It's about not enhancing where you came from. Like, if you move to the top, as I climb, my job is to drop the ladder down for other people to climb up with. I'm not going to force you to climb the ladder, but it's there. Because true power is in empowering others. So if I can help other people, right. then that makes me more powerful to help other people. And in turn, hopefully, those people that I help can help other people. And make the right decision and get up that ladder to do the things that's right. And uh, I, I really give you your props and, and uh, uh, working with the nonprofits. Because, again, you know, as I joked earlier, you know, that's something that you don't has to do, uh, and, and yet you do it. But, uh, you know, kind of back to the business uh, uh, a little, I guess, earlier, is where did the name Yave uh, originate, and what does, it, what does it mean, Joe? Well, as you see the bottle, the bottle actually has a key on it, a real-life key. So Yave means key in Spanish, but it's spelled with two L's. So if you can't speak Spanish, it's like Lave or Lave, you'll say it weirdly. So Yave it's spelled phonetically Y A V E, capital Y A, capital V E. And the reason we put a key on it, the reason we went with that was because we want to give people access to our world. I mean, nobody really has the key to success, the key to this, the key to that. Uh, I want to show I people what I need. Was but again, like, here's the key. Like, this is the key to, to, to happiness, whatever you want to phrase it. But more importantly, the reason I use the key, because every single day of your life, whether it's your job, your apartment, or your car, you're touching a key. Without even realizing it, it'll be as come as subliminal as Yahweh grows. Because everyone mm-hmm. touches keys. It's an everyday thing. And then the deeper science behind the, the, the shortness, the, the way this is designed, the top companies in the world, the four to six letters, one to two syllables, Coke, Pepsi, Apple, is a, is a uh, formula behind that. Right. So Yave, yes, Yave fits into that mold along with the key fitting the actual name. So it worked out. And, again, when you see the bottle, it's an actual key on the bottle. That can be taken off with some work, but it can come off. And, I mean, you have access right there. I like that, and and I love the way that you've really thought through each step of what you've uh, done and and do with the company. And very quickly, I just want to let our listeners know that uh, they're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show on Harlem World Radio, and we're speaking to Joe Cruz Jr., who is the founder of Yabe Tequila, and we're of course talking about uh, tequila. Uh, you know, craft beer, homemade honey that I've seen in Harlem, small batch crafted tequila. So, Joe, uh, we're hitting, it seems, you know, two steps forward, one step back, kind of back to that traditional non-mechanized way of uh, maybe not of life, but of manufacturing. Uh, Am I wrong? Or if I am right, why is that happening? I mean, easy. Um, People are becoming more entrepreneurial. So when, you, when you're when you a regular person in this world, which, you know, I, I don't want to define what a regular is, but, you know, somebody who didn't come from a lot, somebody who didn't have your advantage, yeah. somebody who's a dreamer, you can relate to somebody who overcame the odds and took a risk to create their own thing. So it's, it's the underdog story become real. Like if you can see a guy like myself who started Yavis Kilo on my sofa with $20,000, knowing that it's come up in a year and a half, and then you understand that I come from Spanish Harlem, I, I went through the same things you went through in life, 
it motivates people. So people love a good story, especially when it's something they can relate to and see themselves in, in, in that situation. Like I, I, I told my son many, many times, there's always a reason not to do something and most people find it. Don't be most people. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have a reason. You don't have That's the money. Good. It's raining outside. You're right. sick. You're tired. Your girlfriend or boyfriend dumped you. There's always a reason not to do right. it. The world doesn't care about that. At the end of the day, you still have to pay your bills. You have to create your legacy. And if you want to create a brand from scratch, you have to work two to three times harder than the person going to a nine to five. Like, I don't really take, I don't really get breaks, even though it's not like I work 24 hours a day, but it's always on my mind. There's always something going. There are always texts coming in or emails if somebody wants to discuss something with me. Right. And it, because of that, when people see that real life story and the hustle and they understand that you don't just need money, there are other things that could supplant that, it motivates people and they follow the story because they want to believe that they can do it. And the ones who don't believe they can do it, they want to believe that you did it based on luck and other things, but it's just hard work. It's, it's planning, right? Because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's all those things put together that the average person who has a dream, it motivates them. That's why a lot of times when I do speeches and I speak to people, I tell everyone, if you've ever had a dream, this is dedicated to you. Like, I know what it was like to dream and to make something happen. Most people don't even try. And I think that's one of the saddest things in the world, to, to live in regret mm. and say, I would have, could have, mm. should have, but not just take a Ooh. chance and fail. If you fail, cool. You know it won't work out. But I never wanted to live in regret, and I don't. Yeah, and that's a scary moment to, that I would not even want to imagine that you didn't take advantage of the opportunities in life, and here you are at this day in your life, and you're looking back, and it's like, you know, I should have. I should have sent that email, made that phone call, you know, you know, if I could have, would have, should have, and I didn't, you know. Um, uh, and I wanted to, to ask the, a question that I have that I shared with you earlier differently. Um, why didn't you look at your list of your father's, your relatives' uh, list of contacts, come up with a business plan with an investment needed of, let's say, $20 million uh, or more and do the corporate route? It, it sounds like that's not what you did. You use your twenty grand to – you create a small operation and to gradually move in that direction. How come small versus large? Because even though I could probably get that money and have access to that money, the average person can't. So I, I really wanted to have the proof of concept that this is possible because I've done okay. so much with budgets, and sometimes I had a big budget that I, I minimized because I didn't need as much money. But right. if the average person here is, oh, he got $20 right. million, dollars, he raised it, he's from Harlem, it won't resonate with a damn person. When people right. hear he sat on his sofa for damn near a year with $20,000, <laughs> was his own Trying lawyer, to figure out. his office space, yeah, his office space was his apartment. He just kept focusing on certain things, and it worked. That motivates people more, and I, I had to make it true. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted it just to be part of my story, part of my vernacular on an everyday basis. Well, you know, we, we laughed and joked a little earlier. Uh, uh, that's all I'm going to say, but we're at that six-minute mark already. And, uh, you know, I love, love, love your story, uh, love what you're mm -hmm. doing. I'm thinking about the mango again, and I'm licking my lips again. Um, I get your bottle. Uh, I get your bottle, man. I got you. <laughs> That's not why I keep saying it, but <clears throat> I'm not going to say no. Um, uh, what advice, uh, Joe, do you have for someone who's listening to this or uh, uh, they have a son or daughter like your son, and they want to, you know, just prepare him or her for, you know, an opportunity that presents itself like this. And you, you sound like you are a focused guy. What advice would sure. you have for someone, Joe, who wants to, you know, follow in your tequila footsteps or, or do what you're doing with the business? I mean, I could do this part all day because I get asked every single day, and it, there's so many different things. I get. I'll just rattle off what pops in my head, but the first thing I'll say, there's never a perfect time to start. People always say for the perfect time, and you have the right amount of money. I jumped off the cliff and built the plane on the way down. I, I had the right plan and kept going, and it worked. I didn't, I didn't have anywhere near enough money. I didn't have everything you right. need. It worked. And like I said earlier, there's always a reason not to do something, and most people find it. Like, I didn't care. My favorite movie is The Bronx Tale. My favorite line in my favorite movie is when Sonny says, nobody cares. It really is that mm. simple. Nobody cares about your excuses. Nobody cares why you can't pay your rent. Nobody cares. They just don't. You have to figure it out on your own. 
And then on top of all that, I mean, the, the thing I alluded to earlier, and it really is the secret sauce, so to speak, is team, team, team. team Without team. a team, yeah. you, just, you could be a genius with the best ideas and have everything prepared, but there's nobody on this planet who does everything by themselves. I don't care if you're a tennis player. People are like, oh, you know, Serena Williams is out there by herself. Yeah, but you think she books her own flight? She's her own accountant? She's her own nutritionist? You think she drives herself around? There's always a team in some capacity. I don't think people appreciate that aspect enough. And she's got a great trainer, I mean, who shows her how to yeah. do the right swing. Yeah, most definitely. It's, it's a lot behind the scenes that people – I have guys that people never meet, but they're helping me with when it comes to the finance and legal stuff. And my videographer, people don't see his face, but he's filming amazing videos. Half my sales team doesn't come out. <laughs> There's a lot of people right. every single day doing something. There's always somebody somewhere doing something for the brand. Uh, that, that's uh, uh, great uh, information and uh, excellent advice. And we're at the four-minute mark here, uh, Joe. And I wanted to – Well, let me throw one last Father... thing in. Sorry. Please, don't go. Something else go. I throw in that people – No, some people need to understand. I believe in karma. You do the right thing and it works out. Ooh. I, I've been – I think I'm a pretty good person in business and life, and I have people now that have reached out to me that I haven't spoken to in years, and they're helping me out with a lot right. of things. So karma is a word right. that I'll throw in there because it's real. Certainly, and that's a, that's a good one, and uh, uh, I really believe in the positive, you know, positive in, positive out. And as I always say, my football coach used to always say, you know, before the game, the week of practices, get your mind right. If you get your mind right, then you can make the right decisions to excel and do the things you should do when you get on the field, Yeah, whether it's the football field or the field of life, and, and you're on point with that. And, Joe, I want to wish you a happy Father's Day. But, you know, as a, a single father doing the hard work that you do, uh, any words out there for any uh, dads listening who, you know, have those struggles sometime and it's hard to kind of do it? the way they want to do it, any of those, any positive words like that? Yeah, of course. Um, on the days where I'm the most tired and the days that it's hard to get out of bed and some days are harder than others, all I have to do is look at my son, think about my son yeah. and, and lead by example. Because if, if I'm going to be lazy, my son's going to be lazy. I could talk to him as mm. much as possible, but kids follow actions more than anything. <laughs> I have to show them more than I can try. So when people are like, I'm having a rough day, I can't do this. I'm like, then you, you can't do this for your son. Like, that's the biggest letdown in the world, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Most definitely. And uh, how old is your son? 16. 16-year-old mini He goes to Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx. Yeah, he got a full scholarship Teenager. from his mind. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Does he want to follow in the business, or is it too early yet, or – uh, he says it once in a while, joking around, and I just roll. He he has what he he loves to edit videos, and he's into that world. So he's edited a couple of videos for Yabe, and that's like his, okay. his thing right now. So I let him roll with his passion. That's great. That's great. Sounds great, man. And uh, you know, Joe, we're at the last couple of minutes, and I'll just ask you our our final two questions. Uh, what's your favorite place in Harlem? And if you could give uh, our listeners your contact information so that they can stay in contact with you and uh, 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 follow the brand, follow you, and follow what you do, you know, your favorite place and your contact info. Of course, favorite I, is a bunch of people I would say, but in terms of a restaurant, someone supporting from the beginning, I'm um, Corner Social on 126. Oh, yeah, the Harlem yeah, staple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She showed nice. me love. Um, we throw joint birthday parties every year. It's a genuine partnership nice. back and forth. We help one another. So that's that's a home that's spot nice. for me for sure. And Carter to reach social. out, I mean, the, the the social media is Yave Tequila, Y-A-V-E Tequila on Instagram, on Facebook. And my personal one, if anybody wants to reach out and has questions, it's at the real Joe Cruz Jr. on Instagram. Like if anyone has some needs some advice or something, I might not respond right away, but I will respond at some point to like help someone with something basic like Again, true power is empowering others, and I plan on doing that until the day I die. Uh, Joe, you are the man. I love the conversation. I love what you're doing. love what you're about, and you know what I love to drink already, so I'm not going to even talk about that again because I'll be wearing it out. Yeah. But uh, thank you for being on the show, and happy Father's Day, and the, the best to you and the work that you're doing. Um, it's a, uh, You, you uh, lead a great example. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Have a great one, man. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Um, uh, Another great conversation with another great guest, and, you know, this is how we do it. They're leaders, legends, and trailblazers all the time on the show, all about Harlem, the greatest community in the world.
Talk to you soon. Peace.